Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Risa, and this is Talent Talk. On today's show, we have acclaimed indie singer-songwriter, Jen Grinnells. But before we get to our interview with her, you have to check out this gorgeous song of hers called Resilience. Took a shot all for not feel so low, don't know which way to go. Say you just can't do this anymore. Well, I know you can, I've seen you here before. Sometimes you get so dark You don't recall the light I've seen you come back from worse Dust off and win the fight I know you're feeling tired and confused We've all been there calloused and bruised You will find the sun again And until then, my darling Keep remembering Resilience is a beautiful thing Well, hello, Jen. How are you? So good. How are you? Uh, we are doing so much better now that we are finally speaking with you and we are so excited you're on Talent Talk. And now my better half, Risa Binder, has question numero uno. Oh, you yeah. get into it, yay! <laughs> um, I am so excited to be introducing you to this community and I love you so much. And, you know, I, I have so many questions, but the first one that comes to my mind is you, you are so talented and, in so many different areas of being an artist. And I, I never ask you like, where exactly your inspirations come from for each thing? I mean, is it when you're driving or you're taking a shower and you decide this is the song or like, how, where do they come from? <laughs> um, well, it's funny you mentioned the shower one because I definitely, especially when I was living in Nashville, I don't know if it was something about that shower, but my husband could definitely tell you that there are so many times where he would just see me in my robe, like jet from the back of the house to the room in the front where I wrote, because for sure you're like in the shower and like you get the melody that you finally been looking for, or you get like a lyric idea. So I'm a big shower dasher because I get, because I get those We're making that a word in our, yeah. <laughs> I just made that up. I've never said it before. Um, yeah, shower is a great place for me. Driving, not so much. If I could, if I could find inspiration on the road, man, I would be even more prolific than, you know, like I, I've spent so much time on the road and that is just not a place where I um, am able to write. And then is it like for like the inspiration for musicals and then when you sit down for a, a write for your own project and then you're do a project do they come in the same way or differently or um I think both come to me uh I would say with uh I love it it's, it's fantastic we're keeping it in is that your mom <laughs> <We're keeping it. laughs> I love it I love her so much were those sunflowers what was she holding Can we have those flowers I want them no but she's in a shower cap and a mask <laughs> I'm so grateful. Do you want to? No, keep it. I'll, I've okay. been cleaning out the attic all day. That's why I'm rocking this look. It's Wait, been. This is you look beautiful. Go viral now. Wait. <laughs> all morning, I had super exciting, important meetings. 
Then I went in the attic. <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to say, then you had talent talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, Risa, keep going, my love. Well, no, I was curious. I mean, what just happened with your mom? That could be song inspiration. Close the door, please. That's great theater, though. From stage right to stage left, a commitment just across. I, I just asked them for one hour today. <laughs> they gave you five minutes. <laughs> really, you shouldn't ask for more. But okay. Anyway, I think like, I'm going. Are you like a notebook jotter, downer slash shower dasher? I have like... definitely kept a journal since eighth grade. I definitely put lyrics in there. But my process is this: it is beat my head against a wall for three days. Fourth day, I'm a genius. That's like. It's just how it happens. May like, we all. The first three days, I'm like, why do I do this? What, how do you even write a song? Like, how does this happen? It's this weird magical thing that I just don't understand. And then something usually happens around the fourth day. Not always. There have been months of beating my head against a wall. Um, something usually happens where it doesn't, in the shower or wherever, where I finally feel like I've like cracked it. You know, and I mean, I, I've been in writing sessions with you, Risa, and like, you're so fast. Like, you're just like in the moment, like throwing stuff out. And I'm like, I need to go sit and think about this for 72 hours. Like, that's the kind of my. It's, no, but I have to say, it's the company, for me, it's the company I keep. Like, you are inspiring to me, Sarni. Since for that, that was the room we were in. And um, there are other rooms where it takes me so much longer. I think it's situational for me personally, but it's, I think you're probably not alone there. Will, have you experienced taking the, these couple days to find the right things to say? Or are you pretty quick? Or what is your process, Will? Um, when I'm creating, like if I'm like, if I'm creating, um, if I'm with composers and librettists and creating a new musical from the ground floor, I usually have a really clear idea of what I want the emotional takeaway to be. So my North Star emotionally is incredibly clear, but I run a best idea wins room. I always have and always will. And so I think with that, if, if everyone in the team is on the same page, what we want North Star wise emotionally, I think anything and everything should be thrown at the wall with no apologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like spitballing. I think that sounds like the lovely part of a collaboration. Like when you're mm -hmm. by yourself, it's so lonely. And I'm sure you guys have experienced this where many times you like write it down and you're like, Ugh, and then because there's no one to bounce it off of. And then you read it later and you're like, oh wait, that was a good idea. You just needed like some separation from it. Um, so I definitely experienced that. I also, it, and I, as I'm thinking about that, you're like, what's your process? I'm in a project right now where I'm, um, I'm making an album with a lyricist named Alfred Howard. And it's, so it's my, you know, indie Jen Grinnell's umbrella as like a singer songwriter. It, and I will say the pandemic has been amazing for collaboration. I've never been so prolific in my whole life because I am being kind of more open to these collaborations because I'm not touring. So people are just like, well, let's write, let's make stuff up. So when Al sends me these lyrics, he's just such a genius and that is inspiring to me. And it's really amazing to work with somebody that you read the lyric and the phrasing just immediately clicks for you, the meaning clicks for you. And so with him, it's been so easy, so fast. I love it. Like if I'm like, I'm gonna write a song with Al today, you know, I like go through all the lyrics he gave me, pick the one that, that sticks out to me figure out how I like can get my own story in there. I might change like two lines to make it really personal. And then the song's done by the end of the day. And the reaction to these songs is like <laughs> probably the best <laughs> that I've done in my life. And, and I'm like, and it's the easiest. Like, is there something to that, that it's not a struggle? Um, but I'm, so I'm really excited about that project. And um, it's completely opposite from the musical where it was like, God, the musical is hard. It is the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. It is, you know, like you said, well, like, okay, what's the emotion? Or is there like an action that we're trying to uh, like move forward. forward? And obviously there was a stylistic thing. It's the musical I did, it's Americana. It's 
folk, um, little rock, little bluegrass. So I, I kind of know stylistically. The hardest thing for me was the lyric that was the thesis that I wanted to be poetic in a way that could be taken out of a musical theater context and you could apply it to your own life and still tell a story. <laughs> Boy, was that like. Well, I mean, it's, it's incredibly tough, but of the songs that people can watch online, you succeed. That of course is the Rosetta Project. And again, I just want to remind the audience exactly these different, I mean, you can't really put Jen Grinnell's in any sort of buckets, but here you are as the singer, so indie singer songwriter. You're a part of an amazing duo, um, Siren Songs with Meredith K. Meredith K. Clark, mm -hmm. and you have this musical Rosetta project. One song in particular that resonated with me, Jen, of the research when I was researching you this past week, that is so haunting, and struck me on many, many, many levels. Um, because I am one that has dealt with mental health their whole life, a trauma that we've all collectively been through these past two years, triggered at, you know, all of us triggered at different points. Um, but there was something incredibly healing about your song Resilience that really struck a chord to me. And just to think it was such a, not only a beautiful song, but then looking at the landscape of your work to see that you're able to be raw and goofy and upfront, but also really vulnerable is incredible. If you don't mind just deep diving specifically into resilience. I mean, with over a hundred thousand views, it's obviously also resonated with people throughout this time. I wanna know maybe the reaction that you've gotten from you know certain people throughout and also what the impetus behind you writing it was. Yeah, um, that song was, uh, to be honest, was a writing prompt that was from a group that I was in. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the prompt was. It had nothing to do with resilience. So I think when I just took that phrase, I was just, I mean, I remember exactly where I was. Um, I was in a cabin in Washington. And um, that was a lyric that definitely just tumbled out. And at the time, I was relating it to a friend, not to my own experience necessarily, um, but singing it to a friend, which is the perspective that the song ended up being in. Um, and I started playing it out at shows. It wasn't one that I put on an album. I was just playing it live. And it, I'm, I guess I'm not that surprised that you pulled it out because it is one of maybe three or four songs in my set that just over, gosh, probably seven years, it would be the one that people would be like, that song just, you know, meant this to me, or I, you know, people would come up to shows and be like, I recorded that show at the last concert and it's, I've, it's meant so much to me and I listen to it all the time. And so finally, when I put it on an album, um, it had already been simmering for seven years. And um, so finally did an arrangement of it. And then the pandemic happened. And all of a sudden it like took on this whole new life where people were just like, ah, like I just need this song right now. So it's had a really interesting um, journey that has changed over the years. And I guess I would say that not surprisingly, the songs that, um, that have really stuck with me and been the ones that people always pull out of my show are the ones that kind of started and I wrote them from a personal place, whether mine or somebody else's, and then they've kind of evolved to just mean different things over the years, but they're always a song that people are like, I, I like, I needed that song. It perfectly describes what I'm going through. Um, That's a testament to your storytelling, a testament to your lyrics, and a tes testament to your, com your composition, that it's timeless and timely. It's true. Yeah. Well, listen, Jen, we have, so, <laughs> we have so many more questions for you. I'm like literally in tears thinking about just the music video alone, let alone the beautiful fabric of a quilt that you created and painted with that song. Um, but beyond resilience and all of the incredible work that you've already put out into the world, Risa and I have one very important question. Jen Grinnells, are you ready for game time? Yes.
Well, Jim Grinnell, today is your lucky day because today's game is the questions game. Risa has our questions book in Nashville and Risa, take it away. I don't know why, the, by the way, Risa, every time I do take it away. I don't know why I put like- It's great, I keep it. Keep it, I love it. Jen Grinnell, this is the part where we get to learn more about you. And I love this part so much. I mean, this is a book, a question book, and there are numbers zero to 300. So you can pick, are there any numbers of significance in your life? We can maybe pick two. Number yes. 12. Number 12, why 12? Because my last name starts with a G. And so when I was growing up, you know, if they put people in alphabetical order, for some reason I was always number 12. I love that. Okay. Oh, if time and money were no object for your supper tonight, says supper what would you be eating tonight if time and money were no object oh my god y'all i would sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i'm for global warming and climate change but i would rent a jet and i would go have dinner at one of the top 50 restaurants in the world so mm. maybe like noma or um what's another one maybe one in mexico city or peru like, don't you guys have wonderlust? Like, I just like room for me. Out. Is there room for me, Risa, and your mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've never been on a jet. I don't know how many they fit. But yeah, let's <laughs> go. We're coming. Work. Okay. And next number, number, next number. Oh, I have to pick another number. Yeah, just for fun. Um, 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 um. How? What does it go up to again? Three hundred. Oh, and I was gonna be like three. No. Uh, uh, yeah, three. <laughs> three. Okay, well, yeah, oh we, okay, God. ready? Uh, okay. <laughs> you are gifted enough money to build a vacation home anywhere you want, but it becomes the only place you can vacation from now on. Ooh, okay, that's okay. These are like all are things I've thought about during the pandemic, so this is <laughs> Where would um, you go? I am going to narrow it down to two. Okay, you bet. I'm an indie artist. I'll do what I want. So I would get an A-frame um, somewhere in the, uh, like, the mountains. That would be, like, I would just build, like, an A-frame that had, like, a, you know, like, a studio for me and a studio for my husband and guest rooms, and it needs to have a beautiful view and a river and uh, I would build a river. <laughs> really happy, yeah. But I'm torn because the other place that I would love to vacation for the rest of my life. Oh man. Okay, I'll just throw out Italy and San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. Like those would be my <laughs> foreign places. But I also would really love a house um, in the redwoods, but on a cliff overlooking the ocean in California. That's so doable. Right? <laughs> Manifest so doable. I build know. the river, build the mountain, the A-frame, <laughs> the studio, and take the flowers behind you. <laughs> I'm not lying that, I mean, I have, I know Reese's a vision boarder and I- Me too. <laughs> so like, I do the vision boards and my husband is a consultant. And so like, I have already, I put these things on a huge piece of butcher paper. So these are easy questions. <laughs> I, I love, love it. <laughs> Well, Jen, that was fun. And I'm so excited before we get to more questions that the audience is going to get a little sneak peek of your musical, The Rosetta Project, and Ella Korn singing one of the songs that you wrote both the music and lyrics to. beautiful and I also want to let people out there know even though Jen is right here I'm talking about her and she's in the room in the zoom room um should Jen be coming through your city you have to see her live I have the great privilege of seeing Jen live um at the city winery in Nashville um 
I am blanking on who she opened. Who did you open for? Do you remember? Um, I was in Maniacs. Oh, we're going to ignore that. Um, <laughs> she opened for 10,000 Maniacs and being the opener, you know, when you're an opener, you're new to the room potentially. And I sat back as a friend and just watched the whole thing. And guys, she got a standing ovation. The entire room stood up at the end of her concert. And for those people, I mean, it was, I still, it's, it's ingrained and emblazoned in my mind. Um, and so, and so when she comes to your city, please, please, please go and see her. <laughs> um, my, my final question though, now that you're still here, hi, is, um, <laughs> Do you, are there any, do you want to share, are there any stories that stand out from your road experience that you want to share when you're, you're there and you're like, this is why I do this? I'm sure. Are there any ones that you want to share? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, <laughs> more family members. <laughs> <laughs> Just go, just go. <laughs> is that your mom again? No, this is my husband. There he goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. This is such a great microcosm <laughs> of what it is to be an artist with family members. All we ask is for like three minutes a day. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, cause I need good light. Cause they were like, why don't you go in the bedroom? And I'm like, I need good light people. So <laughs> anyway, why do I do this? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, um, uh, I, uh, was recently reminded of, um, I don't know, a, a couple, I just, I think I, I've been on the road for over a decade now and the, um, I've been, it, it's kind of weird. Like the pandemic was this odd pause and now all of a sudden we're getting back into like maybe real life again. So tour dates are coming and I'm starting to do more podcasts and things like that and really reflecting and looking at um, just where I started to where I ended right before this pandemic and just remembering um, that, you know, like when you start and it's like cappuccino machines and sports events playing over your head and like all of those things become <clears throat> that you're, just trying to get to a place where there's not a cappuccino machine and there's not a football game playing over your head. And I remember so specifically being in um, uh, New Hampshire at uh, Tupelo Music Hall and they had done a artist appreciation night, meaning that the owner had um, picked uh, an artist from the, and I had opened for somebody, probably Willie Porter and the, talent buyer was like we're gonna have you come back and do artist night and so that means it's free they invite everybody all their patrons and uh, ticket buyers and so they all came again I was new to the audience and um I sang in the middle of my set I sang can't stay here which is the same song that you were talking about Risa and um and I sang it and I just god see I told you I was gonna cry during this I am such a crier me, we are too. <laughs> oh my God, we are too, beyond. <laughs> I just remember singing that song and that song is called Can't Stay Here. And it's one I wrote that, it's the song I wrote that made me go on the road, that made me give up my apartment, that made me be like, cause I did used to do musical theater full time. And I was like, no, I think I'm a singer songwriter and I'm gonna take this leap of faith. And, and I'm like, oh my God, it's like, seven years later, I'm still singing this song and it's still relevant in so many ways. And that's so hard. It's still hard that this song is still relevant and it just changes how it's relevant. And so I'm like thinking that and I'm singing the song. And even though I'm so grateful to be playing this show, you know, it was just so emotional. And um, I got a standing ovation in the middle of the show. Oh. And I, just, I just remember finishing the show later and just writing it down and being like, if you ever doubt that you're doing the right thing, or if you ever doubt that you're in the right place, or if you ever doubt whether or not you can write a song, like just think about the fact that people got off of their butts and stood in the middle of your show. And, you know, like just how far you have come. And even if it is hard, like to keep going because it's something you're doing is connecting with people. Um, and I just remember that show really kept me going for a while. Wow. Well, Jen, I think what you're talking about more than anything 
so many beautiful messages within what you just said, but that whole notion of gratitude. And we're in a world still, we get bombarded with social media, comparing ourselves with other people, what they're doing, how fast they're getting it done. And I think this pause, especially these last two years has allowed all of us. And I know recent I've talked about this and you know, it makes me think about when you're, when you're talking to this whole notion of being still and really just appreciating the younger version of ourselves mm -hmm. that would have loved to have been where we're at right now in what we have right now. And the fact that you were able to look within yourself and realize that, yes, you probably could have had an amazing career in the musical theater as a performer, but that you said, dare I use a quote from Sweet Charity, a musical theater show, there's got to be something better than this. Mm. And the fact that you went after it unabashedly, thank God you did. Because right now you get to play every character. You get to play <laughs> every emotion. Because right. that's what you do as a singer-songwriter. You're the ultimate storyteller, Jen. Yeah, thank you. I, I do. It was a very interesting thing to go to school for musical theater, do musical theater, and then be like tap dancing eight times a week and and do that sweet charity thing in my head. Like, is this is this really it? I don't think so. I think there's, I think I love this, but it's not it. And then, you know, just taking that first, that first leap of faith and got a speeding ticket on the way to Denver for my first show. And I'm just like, this is how it's starting. Oh my God. <laughs> and then I got on the stage and it was so crystal clear. I was like, oh no, this is it. Like this, it, and I love musical theater and I love that storytelling, but I did feel like it's, it's a form of really fun pretending. Like you're trying to connect, but like there, it's still like, it's pretending every night. And with songwriting, I think I do cry all the time because it is so visceral. It is so, I am so connected to what I wrote because I'm writing from these very personal places. I mean, I want other people to put their own lives on them, but it just feels like such a pure, such a pure like connection with people. I think there's magic in both. I think musical theater has a magic that's totally different from the magic of songwriting. And, and they're both beautiful. The songwriting thing that gets me though, is that it really truly is like, you start with nothing, you leave with something. And that time that you've spent in the room with these people or by yourself, you do come out of the room with a gift from the song. The song is a gift. And then, but then it was a therapy session at the same time, always, always, always. And, um, you know, and so there's the connecting with the audience in musical theater that is unlike anything I've ever experienced. And then there's the connection in the room with two or three people writing that it is, you've created a lifetime friendship with these people from writing, <laughs> you know? So I, I hear you, I mean, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> well, Jen, you're incredible. I know I speak on behalf of both Ruth and myself. We are so grateful that you took the time today to be on Talent Talk. And we cannot wait until the next time we get to speak with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was so fun.